Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you for stopping by as always. Um, I had a really busy day today. Let me start with yesterday where I had such fun at uh, Ambassador Bob Godek's residence where he was hosting the Nairobi Chamber Chorus and the able leadership of Ken Wakia. Um, let me put up a photograph of, uh, of that and also a link to a little video clip of Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle All The Way certainly get you in the mood for Christmas. Well, we've had a big uh, quarter point increase by the Fed. Uh, it was 100 priced in apparently as we went into that rate hike, but uh, there have been some pretty violent moves in the markets, signaling that it wasn't priced in as much as it should have been. On that note, let me uplift an Andy Warhol $2 bill, Jefferson 1976 signed copy. Home thoughts, I couldn't resist this. Our patron of the oceans, Lewis Pugh, is swimming in Antarctica to protect it. So inspiring. Lewis, I used to love swimming far out in the ocean. Then I had children and a wife, and I thought twice about it. But it was a great pleasure. A little bit scary when you suddenly realize you're out there, you can't see the bottom of the sea, and you're all alone. Scientists' footprints from 3.7 million years ago reveal tallest known member of pre-human species. The footprints of five ancestors of humans who walked the earth more than 3.6 million years ago have been found preserved in volcanic ash. Researchers unearthed the tracks by accident when they began to excavate test pits that had been called for as part of an assessment of the impact of building a proposed museum on the site in Tanzania. The markings reveal that the ancient human relatives walked side by side for at least 30 meters. The footprints were laid down in a layer of ash that was subsequently buried, but which, when moistened, retained the tracks like clay. A first analysis of the footprints suggests that they were made when a male, three females, and a child passed through what is now Laetoli in the African country. The individuals almost certainly belong to a species of hairy bipedal ape called Australopithecus afarensis, which is known to have lived in the region. The layer of ash that preserved the tracks has been dated to 3.66 million years old, the same age as a similar sequence of hominin, or human ancestor footprints found nearby by the famed paleontologist Mary Leakey in the 1970s. These footprints enrich our knowledge about the most ancient hominin footprints in the world, but they tell us something about the makers too. In this case, that we think there were significant differences between the males and the females. This is the most striking thing. A tentative conclusion is that the group consisted of one male, two or three females, and one or two juveniles which leads us to believe that the male and therefore other males in the species are more than one female mate. On that note, let me put up a photograph of stone hand axes that I saw in Oligasai. Another photograph of the hot springs in Lake Magadi, where this is part of the area a lot of this has been found in. And then finally, a nice photograph I found from the photo hour, which I like. Political reflections, the results are 100% accurate and nothing can change them, says Gambia's electoral chief, Sheriff Bojan Jr. Look, the bottom line is, I think Mr. Barrow uh, frightened uh, uh, the Gambian, the outgoing Gambian president with the threat to prosecute, and I think essentially Yaya Jame is trying to negotiate his exit. He's in the departure lounge. The question is, does he want to go first class or not? Clearly, who wants to go first class? Ivanka Trump to get White House office in space reserved for first lady. Kibra artist Yeganizer captures Donald Trump in this oil portrait. I thought it was quite good. Just to go to Donald Trump, I think there's method in his Twitter firestorms and to wit, you know, 
know, there have been some major moves really underneath the noise. He's undercut the one China policy, he's overturned the sort of Victoria Newland uh, component within the State Department um, with his outreach to Russia. I wrote about this um, in, on the 14th of November when I said, here comes President Trump talked about Trump deploying linguistic warfare with devastating effect. CNN have annotated Trump's tweets. Have a look at that link if you're interested. Nicholas Burns on NPR says, I don't think Vladimir Putin is a sentimental person. Well, he probably can't afford to. Haaretz Kong, opinion, the hypocrites crying over Aleppo. That's a fair point. Rodrigue Duterte, I used to personally kill criminals, says he cruised the streets looking for trouble to show police that it was possible. That's really an extraordinary admission from a leader of any country. Philippine drug lords have raised the bounty on the president to a million dollars. Have a look at this photograph from Mail Online. Rain pours onto the body of Romeo Torres Fontanilla who was gunned down, witnesses said, by two unknown men on a motorbike in Manila. China has installed weapons systems on the artificial islands. And I ask what's a pivot to Asia to do, but clearly they're in Trump's crosshairs in a way um, that's going to make them nervous. Um, let's see how this all plays out. But it's, it's volatile, and it all started with a phone call the Taiwanese president, former CIA director and U.S. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta. Cyber security will be the battleground of the future, no doubt. Gary Kasparov was tweeting this morning about how dangerous Putin was, and I responded by saying, just as you, Gary Kasparov, were infinitely better at chess than your adversaries, so is Vladimir Putin at 21st century statecraft, power projection, and the new digital ecosystem. Russia's intervention was a digital one, it was subtle, it was non-linear, but at key moments just plain decisive. Nassim Taleb explains Syrian conflict in one propaganda-free chart. International markets, well, we got the rate hike, and uh, I wrote about this on the 14th of Remember when I was saying, here comes President Trump, the dollar index has jumped to a 14-year high. 21st of November, I said that higher interest rates are propelling the dollar. Have a look at this from Jamie, a longer-term chart. The dollar is up 30% since 2014. 21st of November, I said Trump is accelerating a global flight to quality and a stampede back into U.S. assets seeing the euro drop to its lowest level since January 2203. Uh, Take a look at this from Bloomberg Markets. It's currently at 104.28. The US 10-year yield marches higher, now at 2.63%, the highest since 2014. And Holger asks, how long can the Bank of Japan defend its 10-year yield target at around zero? 14th of November, I said, I think the quantitative easing consensus is now a busted flush. And then on the 12th of September, I wrote my piece, Mirrors on the Ceiling, the pink champagne on ice, and she said, we are all just prisoners here of our own device. Last thing I remember, I was running for the door. I had to find the passage back to the place I was before. Relax at the night, man. We are programmed to receive. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. What is clear, I said then, is that we're at the fag end of this party. Then have a look at this. Jamie at Reuters, this is the 35-year bull market in U.S. Treasuries ending. It definitely is. Japanese yen is in free fall versus the dollars. The Bank of Japan has to print more and more money to defend the 10-year yield target of around 0%. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro, 104.27. Dollar index of 103, 103.13. Dollar yen, 118.11. Swissy, 103.11. Pound, 124.77. Aussie, 0.7390. 
India rupee 67.865, South Korean won 1187.14, Brazilian real 338.60 holding its own, Egyptian pound low 18.5070, and the rand unwound and back above 14 at 14.08. I'll put up a three month chart of the dollar index, but uh, you know my target was 110 for the end of next year. Let's see, we might get there much quicker. Euro dollar notwithstanding. You know, it busts through that triple bottom we were talking about. That triple bottom is now of chart resistance to the upside, and you can sell it looking for the parity drop. Jeff Bezos, first ever Amazon Prime and customer deliveries in the books. Uh, 13 minutes click to delivery. Check out the video. I'll put up an image of that as well. Commodity markets go. Let's take a look at that. Where are we? 1130.74, again, lower still. Crude oil. $52. Uh, I'll put up a one month chart. That's topping out in my view as well. Plunging cocoa prices mean you can splurge on Christmas chocolate. Um, Joe Wiesenthal, Emerging Market Currency Index equals Woodshed. Have a look. Sub Saharan Africa, I go back to that quote I like from the LSE for business. Traditional incumbent re election bias is at a historic low. People power counts, the dictators are fragile, says Simon Allison in the Daily Maverick. That goes back to my piece over the weekend after the Arab Spring, is this the Black Spring? I said the big picture point is in fact a demographic one. Many commentators define the African population surge as a dividend, but what is clear that is, if it is allowed a free and fair vote, it is going to be a terminator for a whole number of regimes. The demographic bulge is now arriving at voting age. This is that moment. Its importance cannot be gainsaid. These regimes are now facing an existentialist crisis. We need to ask ourselves how many can an incumbent regime shoot stone cold dead? Keep an eye on DRC because this is where we're seeing this play out right now. A hundred, a thousand, ten thousand. This is another point. There is a threshold beyond which the incumbent can't go. Where that threshold lies will be discovered in the throes of the event. So when you look around, you should consider that the biker president sitting in the presidential palace in Kinshasa is hanging on by his fingertips. The Ethiopian government needs to reinvent itself as a national movement or party and do it now. Geriatric government from Harare to Equatorial Guinea might, might not move aside easily, but make no mistake, it is in the departure lounge. And the open question is, will it leave first class, coach or be placed in shackles and placed at the back of the plane like our people are? when they are sent back from Europe because they have entered illegally. Jamais fleet of Rolls Royces all have his name monogrammed on the leather headrests, cause what else is there to spend it on in the Gambia? Our smooth and plain. Dollar versus Rand, as I said, we pop back above 14. Let me put up a six month chart. Egyptian pound on the back foot big time. I'll put up a three month chart. Very interesting a report in Quartz Africa about Dangote. Put another way, Dangote called the government's bluff and won. In the long run, the fact that we got to this point paints an unfavorable and unpredictable outlook for investors looking at the Tanzanian market, says Ahmed Salim, an analyst at Taneo Intelligence. Relations between business and the government are already strained. Uganda Central Bank cut its main lending rate on Wednesday to 12% from 13%. It was good to catch up with the Kenya Airways chairman, Michael Joseph, who said many things, but two things I can put out there. Positive, we could pull this off. Lots of work to be done. I'd like to I'd also like to join Kenya Traffic in thanking Bob Collimore for remembering his customers. He was giving out free tickets, free transport. Banks defy interest rate caps to grow profits by 6%. This is a backward-looking indicator. There will be a negative growth in the last three months and positive growth in the first six. Um, going back to the stock market yesterday, obviously everyone was looking at the Fed. We've got that now. Um, we saw a little bit of a bounce in Sassini T on the note of, uh, of the 
going to farm the mac macadamia nuts. He gets ready to one month high. Safari comp a little bit soft, uh, down 12.09% since closing at a record high in early November. I think the price correction has surely run its course. Uchumi got slotted 500 million shillings apparently. Uh, by the government, nation media bounced 2.28 percent of a five-year closing really low, but the media sector has been crushed. Standard Group is also down 35.71 percent this year. Housing finance was soft yesterday. That's all about what's been coming out of the court case. EABL was the most actively traded share of the exchange, and it's down 9.16 over the last four weeks and is now deeply oversold. I really appreciate the fact that you stopped by. I'm grateful for that. And uh, I hope you've got some good holiday plans. I'm staying in Nairobi. It tends to be quite quiet, but quite pleasant because you can get everywhere very quickly. So I'm looking forward to that. And my brother visiting from Chicago. So once again, thank you.